Hello everybody, and welcome to another technical episode of Cloud Adventures. I'm Ettore, and I am a solution architect with AWS. Today, I'm joined by Andres, CTO of OneOT. Welcome, Andres. Hello, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Can you briefly introduce which are the OneOT use cases that you offer to your customers, please? Yeah, so OneOT has uh, several different business lines. First and foremost is our connectivity business, where we offer global cellular connectivity to IoT device makers around the world. Then we built an awesome connectivity management platform and uh, we license it to telecoms around the world. And our third product is eSIM infrastructure, which we also license to telecoms around the world. Thank you. A lot of interesting use cases. Talking a little bit more about the eSIM one, how did you implement it on AWS? On AWS, we have two different uh, eSIM platforms. One is the M2M use case, and one is for the consumer use case. They're both in separate virtual private clouds. And on those virtual private clouds, we have EC2 instances where the software runs. Uh, we also use cloud formation so that we can easily deploy those clouds whenever needed. Also, I know that the number of your customers is growing and you're approaching 2 million subscription at the moment. So I'm curious to know how did you architect your solution in AWS to match this growing? Yeah, it's a good question. So there are several aspects to this issue. One is the fact that some of our largest customers require a completely separate instance. So for them, we launch a completely segregated uh, VPC so that uh, all of their traffic doesn't affect the other customer's traffic. And plus, this uh, allows for added network security. On the other hand, in one of those uh, VPC, uh, we have several uh, worker nodes that are all behind one load balancer. When the traffic hits the load balancer, it selects one of the worker nodes that then deals with this traffic. Uh, this traffic is usually some sort of an eSIM transaction request. This request then gets saved to the database cluster. Now, once this traffic is saved to the database, uh, then one of the worker nodes can pick it up and start fulfilling the request. Also, we use uh, CloudFormation and AMIs so that we can easily add uh, new nodes whenever the traffic increases. This is really interesting. Thank you. Also, I know that it's really important in this sector, the security and the encryption, and also of course, I know working with you that it was one of your main priority. So can you explain how you implemented security and encryption on AWS? Yeah, so there's several aspects to this also. On the security side, then we use security groups uh, on our EC2 instances so that we can make sure that all the traffic within the cloud uh, is only allowed from sources that we trust. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, AWS Network Firewall. Now we use AWS Network Firewall because it allows us to define firewall rules in the Suricata format. Using the Suricata format, we can do really advanced uh, firewall rules where we look at the packets and the contents of the packets. That means that we can do stuff like uh, only whitelist traffic from uh, specific domain names, not even IP addresses. And also, we make sure that all the traffic that goes outside of the cloud is always encrypted and that uh, no plain text uh, protocols are allowed. Another important topic that is really relevant is observability and monitoring. So how do you observe, how do you monitor your workload on AWS? We use a mixture of uh, tools AWS provides, for example, uh, SNS and CloudTrail. Using those tools, we can make sure that, for example, whenever somebody changes some firewall rules, uh, the security operations team are immediately notified of this and they can make sure that this firewall rule change was something that was actually planned and ordered and not some sort of a bad actor trying to hack the system. For monitoring and logs, we use uh, third-party tools like uh, InfluxDB and Loki. But since we are running uh, our services in EC2, and it makes uh, installing them really easy. So you just open up your package manager, do your APT install, configure the service, and off you go. Really interesting also to know how you integrated uh, third-party solutions. Last question for you. Uh, I'd like to know which are your learnings and which are your next steps on AWS. So we've learned that uh, running everything in separate EC2 instances can be a bit burdensome uh, regarding the time to configure everything and, and to monitor everything and so on. So our next goal is to use uh, Amazon EKS on Fargate. That way we can go completely serverless. Uh, so that means that we don't have to spend that much time configuring the services anymore or uh, installing OS upgrades or security vulnerability fixes. 
all of that stuff would be handled by AWS and then we can just focus on making our product better and our customers happier. This is an amazing news. Also, I cannot wait to see where it goes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to know more about the business use case of 1OT, please go watch the video with my colleague Gigi.